Imagine waking up at 3.30 a.m. to leave the house at 4 to get to the passport office for 5. You pull up to the passport office feeling satisfied that you may actually be the first person in line. But there's only one problem. 65 other people had the same idea and they all got there before you did. This might sound a little ridiculous. However, unfortunately, this story is not unique. I'm the Unspecialist. Let's talk about bureaucracy and why the Guyana Passport Office is still backward in 2024. If we were to rank government services in Guyana, the Passport Office would probably rank first. From the bottom, let's walk through the process to expose all the pain points and then afterwards, we can discuss the implications. Divorce is hard, painful, and complicated. After the heartbreak comes paperwork. Washington Law Firm specializes in helping you through that process. We know how hard endings can be, so we take your legal representation seriously. At Washington Law Firm, we provide serious help for serious legal matters like divorce. To book your free consultation, call 718 718- 877-3100. Or find us at 455 Utica Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. If you'd like to advertise with us, be sure to make contact via our Facebook page. You can also inquire about hiring me to host your events, record voiceovers, or radio ads. The beautiful voice that you heard in the ad on this video is also available to you along with many others. People have to wake up extremely early or even camp out near the passport office in hopes of getting through. However, even that doesn't necessarily guarantee that you'll get in on any given day. That's your first sign that the system is inadequate and unable to process the number of people who need to use it daily. Medi left home at four, got to the passport office at five and met 65 people in line before them. The line closed at 6.20 and anyone who came after was turned away, including a young mother and her young baby. Christopher got to the immigration office at 6 a.m. with over 150 persons lined up, with some of those claiming that they've been there since 3 a.m. This shows that the system is poorly designed or inefficient or both. Let's continue to find out some more about this system. When you get inside, you have to play musical chairs waiting to get to the front and be processed. This is tedious and uncomfortable for many people, especially the pregnant, sick, and elderly. With so many solutions available, one can only wonder why this system is so horrible. The simplest solution is to have people pull a number, have a seat, and wait for their number to be called. But there are other solutions available as well too. Now, before we move on, I want you to understand a few things. First is that some people actually get to the passport office as early as 1 a.m. This passport office does not open until 8 a.m. And generally, people who get in in that first batch or first round don't leave until 10 or 11 a.m. And some of those people can also leave as late as 1 or 2 p.m. Which means that the average person is coming to the passport office early, wasting or spending a lot of time waiting just to get inside. And then once they get inside, you're spending anywhere from two to six hours in that office. If you're spending that long, then surely you'll have to use the washroom facilities at the office. This is the toilet at the passport office. Yeah. How filthy. I just cannot believe how filthy this is. Oh my God. Oh, sh No. Oh. Steak. Oh my god, this is a f***ing passport office. Oh my god, yo, 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 guys, guys, yo, I thought it was bad. What the? 
like somebody gonna steal the tank I don't even need to use the toilet I just have to show you guys this sh and look the disrespect think clean you're a nasty boy it's a filthy fucking country if you weren't sure whether you wanted to stay in this place or not by the time you visit this passport office you definitely want to leave oh my good god oh and you'll probably have to eat breakfast or lunch so you'll have to pack those too after that long wait and barely hospitable process you have to wait another week or two to get your passport and that's for the people who actually get through for the ones that don't you have to repeat this process as many times as it takes before you finally get the ball rolling that's why there's a portion of people who simply give up however that doesn't mean that the people who give up never get their passports which brings me to the implications of having such an inefficient and inhospitable system poor systems facilitate corruption wherever there are problems people will seek solutions and in this case things are so bad that people are willing to bypass that difficulty at any cost this dynamic facilitates the rampant bribing culture we see all throughout ghana's public service you pass a little bread pass a little something and you get through quicker i guess a more politically correct way to describe it would be an expedition fee in any event you can see this problem at many government services and at a glance there's many things that can be done to improve these services However, ironically, despite them being public services, it's quite clear that none of these services are people-focused or public-focused. To put it in one sentence, these services are so bad and so inefficient that not only do you have to deal with the lack of efficiency and productivity with the service itself, but the time you spend going through the process affects your productivity and efficiency elsewhere in life. Think of all the unnecessary days off that people had to take to go deal with these matters. Think of the last sleep, the last travel time, etc. So whether we focus on specific problems like we did early in the video or zoom out and look at the bigger picture, every corner of this photo is looking horrible. And it's desperately clear that something has to be done to fix this and soon. Do you have any passport office horror stories? Let me know down in the comments. What do you think can be done to improve the current system at the passport office? Why do you think the system is as bad as it is now and continues to be such a pain? Are there any other government services that give you difficulty like this? Don't be afraid to share those stories in the comments as well. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.